Thundergrunt. What's up? Bob. Bob. Introduce yourselves. Uh, who are you, Bob? Oh, I'm Bob Rose. I'm a Baltimore filmmaker and an editor and a man. <laughs> I, <laughs> I, <laughs> I am Jimmy George. I am a uh, script consultant and a screenwriter. I am Jamie Nash, writer of screens, both large and small. Right. All sizes. All, all devi- sizes. All devices that all- Jamie Nash... <laughs> Uh, today we're going to talk about it. It. We're going to say Stephen King's it every single time. <laughs> you have to. You to have to. avoid any confusion. <laughs> we're going to talk about the new it, not the not the TV movie. Andy Muschietti's it. Good. I don't know if I'm saying that right. We I, had some confusion on that. I, I think, think it's you... pronounced Andy. Andy <laughs> Muschietti. I, yeah, I don't know how to say his name. But we're yeah, we're going to talk about... Uh, what is the highest grossing horror movie of all time? I think yep. it might be. I, yeah, I didn't check. With yeah. inflation. Didn't Google. It was, with, with inflation. Um, I'm asking. I well, don't know. The, the, the extra, Bride of Chucky yeah. might be. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, Chucky. I'd be so yeah, about that. Yeah, no, it's... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's um, it, it was pirated. It's, <laughs> right. <laughs> it was It, and then The Sixth Sense, and then War of the Worlds. Those is War of the Worlds three. count as a horror movie? Or Six Sense, for that matter. Yeah, both of them Six are on the line. Six Sense more there. It, for that matter. Hey, dun, ooh, dun, dun. I mean, I got this off the IMDb uh, horror movie list, so you. we'll it, see. It sounds, yeah. the, it sounds IM, right. Was that made by a fan, or was it made by IMDb? No, made by IMDb. So, oh, okay. Yeah. I would bet the Scream you know, movies were up there. by Amazon, like everything else. I, I bet the Scream movies were up there, too. Oh, gotta be, yeah. They must be up there. I feel like they would be. They'd have to be. At least one. Did it make over a billion? Close. Uh, I, I didn't look it up. Damn it, <laughs> Jamie. Fuck. Everyone. <laughs> it's on the outline, everyone. I brought it up because I thought well, he looked it up. <laughs> I mean, this is knowing knowing the box office numbers is very instructive. You know, people at home. We, well, the name is Writer's write. Blockbusters. Yeah. <laughs> I, this, Jamie, you don't need to look it up. It, this was a blockbuster through and Absolutely. through. Absolutely. This was a mega hit of the summer. Yeah. I oh, mean, yeah. it, everyone was talking about yeah. it. And it what, was kind of rare for horror. And, and rated thing. R. Yeah, Both it was of kind those of things. It's kind of like a blockbuster horror movie. I mean, it was a big event. Absolutely. You know, which is rare. I mean, what was the last horror movie you can think of that was kind of like an event, like a like a summer blockbuster? I know this wasn't summer, but that kind of movie. Can you think of any? Not like this. Not that everyone. Not that. Oh, not about. that where the anticipation was on this level. Yeah. Like, because you know, we, there's so much history here with the franchise. Yeah. And the source material, and then the you know the original movie with Tim Curry and everything. Yeah. Oh my God. This has yeah, so much up. lineage. The build up. Plus yeah. all the years of them trying to get it to get it into motion. You know, I mean, you were hearing for years the it, the, you know, remake is in development, which saying remake is right. a weird. It's not a remake. It's yeah. It's yeah. remade from the source material. Right, yeah. There yeah. is nods to the original yeah. movie in it. We're not gonna touch yeah, on no, that, but. Yeah. The, it's it's not a remake per se. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. It's like how uh, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory isn't a remake of Willy Wonka and the Chocolate right, Factory. Right. Exactly. It's, it's like the source material. I thought you were going to go Charlie's Angels. <laughs> Jamie always brings up Charlie's Angels. This Jamie like loves Charlie's comedy. Angels. Yes. Let the man love it. I no, just that's awesome. I just like the Beyonce song. That's the, best part. That's the only thing you like. Yeah, I, I've never seen the movie. Actually. Um, but Chris by the way, McGlover? Chris I, McGlover's best yes. role. No. I, I looked up the box office. What is? It? It's what in is the seven hundred million no, range, it didn't make but for, combined. But combined. for a horror movie, oh, that's, that's amazing. Yeah, usually, what happens? If it was is... solo, it would suck. Uh. <laughs> but for a horror movie, it's positive. What's that's... the budget on it? Oh, now I got to go back and look up the budget. <laughs> What is this? It's Thir- okay. It's, it's our 11th episode. We can still be yeah. uh, bad at this, <laughs> no, right? The, the budget was 35 million bucks. See, wow. for 700 million on 35 million, that's an amazing wow. success for wow. a horror movie. Yeah. And I I mean, the we were talking about the development of it. So 
it first had well it actually had a screenwriter that again i can't remember because i didn't bring up wikipedia or something yeah. on it for many years but then the um true detective team yeah. came in well, i can never pronounce the guy's name Kerry Fukunaga. 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 We apologize um, if that's sorry, right. Kerry, <laughs> yeah. if you're listening. Sorry, you're um, talented. We're sorry about your name. Yeah. 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 Uh, so, um, yeah. So he was brought in, and there was a lot of excitement because you know he had that kind of Lovecraftian vibe yeah. going for True Detective, and he worked on it for some time. But then they came to creative differences, and he left the project, and the director of Mama. Uh, who is uh, another name? Everybody's name is really hard. It's hard to pronounce. Um, yeah. You mean the director Andy, of this? Andy, Andy, it looks to me like it's Andy Muschietti. Yeah, I want to call him Andy Muschietti. Andy Muschietti. <laughs> it looks like Italian to me, but I don't know. I'd have to look yeah. it up. It looks like Muschietti. Yeah. 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 I, I don't know. I, yeah. I, I think it works. Yeah. So so he came in uh, after after the True Detective team left. I think, but I looked at both of their drafts. I. I did a quick browsing of this a long time ago, back when the movie came out. Um, and the True Detective draft, we'll call it, was very similar to this okay. draft. Like, they had made the decision to do, um, you know, the two movies split into two the exact same way. Which a I lot, think is a really smart decision. A, a lot of the decisions were the same. There were some key detail differences. There were smart some scenes Smart business extended. decision. Not just a smart writing decision. The business decision of the two is... Yeah, well, you amazing. Uh, they, they, I'm shocked they didn't try to make it into a trilogy and do like the Hobbit thing where they stretch the material and add stuff. There's still just, a time on the. I know, part two. I know. But we're I, gonna hear I, part two's three. I movies. appreciated that they were like, no, we're just gonna do children's, ch the children's version, and then the adult. You know, I I think that's a perfect way to cut this mm -hmm, into two. Mm -hmm. You know, and uh, I think in the wrong hands. They would have made it three. I, or yeah. made it one, maybe. I, Is there too, yeah. too much story for maybe 90 I, I mean, minutes? Yeah, I will so. say, having, 1100 pages. having read yeah. the book decades ago, <laughs> when I was a little kid, I read this book. I mean, I was I was. Have probably, we all read the book? J no. oh, okay, I've read it. I, I was probably 10 when I read it, or 11 or something. I don't know. It was, it was really young. <laughs> Man, that's a weird read for an 11-year-old. Uh, it's all Man. I used to read was Stephen King books. Um, and... What do you think of the the sex scene when you? Were I probably kid? loved it, and it, I was probably <laughs> I was probably looking forward to something like that happening in my own life, which never happened. To You're always guy. in the sewer running around. Yeah, I was in the sewer playing. No, I actually uh, did play in the sewers. When I did I was too. A kid. I did too. Uh, Thinking of it now, the, the I'm like that kid who fears no, the gray water. I'm the like, gray water. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, we we totally played in the sewers. Uh, but having read that book, I always wondered how how that second part is going to translate not really remembering the miniseries because as i remember the book it was almost powered the the adult story is almost powered by the mystery of not knowing what it is not knowing all the details not mm -hmm. knowing what they what happened and it's kind of a flimsy story taken yeah. if you just take out the adult story by itself and put it on paper it's kind of flimsy oh, okay it's it's really powered by that mystery of we don't know what it is. Why is this person committing suicide? Why are they calling each other back? Why are they going back to Derry? Maybe J.J. I mean, Abrams should have directed the second one for the mystery box. Exactly. <laughs> you know, like, yeah. And with, yeah. Without the mystery, I'm curious. I think the true adaptation work, the really hard adaptation, is in the second story. The first, okay. you could almost take it and fix the problems and work the logic out and do some of the stuff that makes it more cinematic. But I think that second thing, that, that second story is really going to have to be worked on and so figured out. And you're saying you it. think this was the easy, easier home run? I do. Okay. I do. Okay. I, I, and I don't remember the miniseries well enough to remember how they made these choices. Uh, but I, I think a lot of it had to do with a loss of memory. A lot of them don't the, remember. The miniseries had, also yeah. is concurrently cutting back and forth. Right. Yeah. It's not... Okay. completely separating okay. it I, yeah, for some right. reason i thought it was also separated like this no it's just really long okay. and they cut they do cut back and forth though wow yeah so, it, i haven't actually sat through the miniseries in maybe five six years but yeah, i remember it cutting it cuts back and forth whereas this is literally just cutting them in half yeah. you know there's not any concurrent storytelling going on yeah like the books like that though mm -hmm. right the book yeah i remember yeah, I, I, it's been I've been a long time. No, the for book me. goes it, it goes back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Right, but that's what I'm saying. The back and forth, um, there's a big mystery in the adult side because they don't have their memory. You don't know what they did. That's where a lot of the tension comes from. They're kind of like, removing the puzzle of this. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's by the by their handling of the first the chapter way they're doing the it. Movie. But they're but 
I guess they figure it's been done like that. The yeah. source material and the original yeah. movie did that, so they're trying something something different. Like, it's yeah. it's kind of like Lost, the later seasons of Lost. Spoiler, where they flashed forward when they were off yes. the island, but then they were still on the island. Yeah. But you knew there was some tragic thing that might have happened between getting off the island and being yeah. <laughs> right, and you, right. But you didn't know what it was, so it was fueled by that mystery, and you were trying yeah. to connect the dots. Well, our dots are going to be connected when we get yeah. to the adult story. We so, already know. Yeah. yeah. But well, as let's far talk as, about this story, though. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so as far as I, yeah. I pers- I, I think it's a very judging it on its own, especially from someone who doesn't know the source material. I think it's a really well done uh, adaptation. Meaning, yep. it feels like a movie. It doesn't feel like a book. When I'm watching this movie, there isn't a moment where I go, "This feels like a bad." book adaptation you know like, that's like the best way i could probably think to describe this because because like, when you, well good job because <laughs> yeah because yeah. when you watch okay for instance harry potter you know a lot of those later movies especially where the book is like 800 pages mm-hmm. you feel the loss and i don't know the harry potter books but when i'm watching it i feel like this is a, cr- a truncated uh material missing a ton of shit when when i uh, when i watch this movie there's lots of Easter eggs and references that people have told me are lacking context for the fans of the book and they get frustrated. But as a viewer, that's not, I'm not going, what does that mean? No. You know what I mean? It Nothing doesn't, it doesn't little... leave you in the dust. Exactly. And I couldn't agree more with the Harry yeah. Potter thing. Everything feels like, uh, like it's, it goes from the machine in yeah. Harry Potter where it's like, how do we fix something? Well, there's a thing. And I'm like, well, where's that? You know, it does, this right. didn't feel like that. Right. It, and, it didn't and, feel like I was lost. But we're so, so, so much um, of the stuff that comes out now is based on pre-existing IP. So I feel like it's a it's a regular experience now where I'm watching something and I feel like something's missing. Like, for instance, the recent Netflix Death Note. Um, I, I could feel the loss of some of the material that didn't make it in even though I wasn't familiar mm-hmm. with the yeah, source yeah. material. Yeah. What I'm saying is I with this... I really with enjoyed this, that movie. Uh, and I like that movie, too. Yeah, yeah. What I'm saying is when I watch this movie, I don't feel the loss of any material. Yeah. And yeah. I, I should throw in there, too, that Gary Doberman uh, actually got credit on this. He he rewrote... He took that original True Detective draft and then did a rewrite. Okay, so he, he polished he, it up. He came on. And the reason I need to mention him was he was my manager at one point. Holy <laughs> shit, oh, really? Jamie. Yeah. So this, this, is a, this is a weird connection. I mean, he was he was the assistant to my manager, but he was he was the guy who actually liked my quirky, weird horror stuff. He was a big Stephen King fan. He comes from Philly. He used to meet me up down the street here in White Marsh every now and then. What? Um, He's a really nice guy, and it was early in his career when he first moved to LA, and he wanted to be a um, a writer, and he was writing on the side, and he was an assistant at this. It was a woman named Catherine James who he was he was one of her assistants and he very quickly started to write and get noticed after that. And I, I really haven't not to say my judgment about how much I like the script has anything to do with how much I know him, but he is a really good guy. He's a really good guy that I liked. And I haven't really talked to him since. So I this mean, is his, he was too busy. this could be his dream job. Absolutely. Yeah. I'm this sure is what he was aiming for. He, he seemed, he always struck me as a very humble guy, but I, I absolutely bet it was one of his dream jobs. Um, he's also worked on, uh, the Annabelle movies. He worked, yeah, I he's saw in that. the James Wan uh, world. Yeah. He's, he's doing The Nun. Um, I think it's Wan. But is it James Wan? James Wan. Us and the what names. What did I say, Wan? I know, we, we're terrible James with Wan. names. What did yeah. I say, James Wan? Wan. Uh, yeah. Okay. Just like I could I, be wrong. Just, no, 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 you're, no that, you're right. I think it's you're Wan. Right. Uh, so, um, uh, anyway, Gary Doberman. That's inspirational. He, even Doberman's a weird name to say, but at least yeah. I knew him. I knew his well, pronunciation. He, sounds like he made it to the the, <laughs> the top of the ladder. He was climbing up. Yeah, yeah, a good guy On, too. Very nice guy. The biggest, so. the biggest horror movie of all time by the biggest horror writer of all time. Yeah, but absolutely. As I say that, there is some discussion about what this movie is, apparently, oh, which I didn't gosh. know until until Jimmy uh-huh. introduced this and you introduced this to mm-hmm. me, and I saw Jimmy on Twitter was. Yesterday. Oh yeah, you were I, I reached about, out. I want to. I want to know. People are so funny about their definition well, of a horror. People movie. are question. We're questioning if this counts as a horror movie, which is insane. I, I I don't get that. But can you guys? Do you guys have any explanation of why that is being? I don't have an insight in as to why someone would think this isn't a horror movie. I, what is it if I, it's I have not? Some theories. I have but some what theories. is okay, it if it's okay. not? Okay. So maybe this is more from the writer perspective. It's I mean, a drama with somebody in makeup. <laughs> they're, they're, there are some examples of uh, 
of people. And I think this is the bulk of them. It's just, it didn't scare me. It's not a horror movie. That's so and that's a horrible, that's a horrible hate thing. That. So, I didn't laugh. It's not a comedy. Exactly. Yeah, <laughs> okay. But I, I honestly think there's another factor. And it's the, this goes back to the Blake Snyder genre factor. Because this is a very loose monster in the house. True. Okay. They're not trapped, in my no. opinion. They would probably be better off survival wise. Now, Georgie would never be found and stuff like that to just go home and hide or yeah. something. I mean, maybe not because Georgie died and there's some other, but maybe only one of them would get plucked off or something like that. But they're not as trapped. I think this is the more monster of a, does come to them, though. Yeah, it yeah. It is, it I, is coming rules. to them. It does. Yeah. yeah. I think it's more of a quest movie. I yeah. mean, I, in some ways, it's almost aligned to Saving Private Ryan or something. Yeah. You know, there's a team that's going on a quest. Or, or I'd even say Goonies. Or it's Goonies. Very Goonies. It feels more like Goonies. Or Monster yeah. Squad. Yeah. Yeah. But or, I mean, that was the time things. when it was written. Stranger that's things. indicative of the stories that were being told at the time than it was crafted. Well, we're also it. talking about a story that's been displaced to a new time yeah. to fit with the time it's yeah. being made. Yeah. Let's not forget that. Not but, much different time. It was 88. The well, no, what I'm saying place. is the story oh, takes place. The kids are in the 50s, 50s in, in the book. In the book. Uh, that's right, yeah. You know what you. I'm saying? And, and, and I understand adult. what you're saying. Okay. okay, yeah. I'm just saying that might change some st- yeah. with the stylistically. I think so. It changes a little. So. Yeah. So, so I had anyway, – this is more of a writerly theory than it probably is the fans are – I really honestly think it's just like, it wasn't scary. It didn't scare me. Yeah. Yeah. Nobody, Nobody got said, pushed into a wood Everybody said it was scary. <laughs> but <Yeah. laughs> but it, it made me wonder that if your goal as a hero isn't necessarily survival, and is it a horror movie – um yeah i think so yeah I, i'm not i'm not arguing for it but i that was something i noticed that the plot of it is very similar to other movies that are not horror movies but it does have these horrific elements can i it. point to an older episode of ours sure poltergeist yeah i don't no. feel like the exact plot of poltergeist is survival no. it's it's saving someone like this yeah, movie yeah. I, but I the agree. family's not like in the house dying yeah you know they're trying to get I'm just saying it's but it's slightly similar. I'll There's argue danger on both of you guys' side that whether survival is uh, imminent, you're still feeling primal fear, yeah. right? No, to I'm me, with you, man. I'm not. Yeah, yeah This is yeah, definitely yeah. a horror movie. No, no, no. I'm saying I worked. At, I managed examples, a video store for five years. This is in the examples? horror section oh, yeah. without question. Oh yeah, no, you know, yeah, yeah. Th- we're not arguing. Yeah. None of us That's are arguing, arguing on the man. side yeah. that this isn't a horror movie. I mean, I I just can't believe it because. Taken if if the book didn't if there was no book and this just came into the movies as is I think this would be like stack up neck like it felt like a great '90s monster movie like it would stack up next to like uh, the late Nightmare on Elm Street movies and uh, uh, Candyman all of those things I think that it would still be heralded. Sit right next to yeah pumpkin yeah head. Ex- no it would <laughs> right, People, yeah, yeah. yeah it's a creature feature it's like. <laughs> It's a no-brainer, but I get what you're saying. It's the it's the like, what is the goal? Yeah, and and, and yeah. I'm I'm more arguing that that's why they're arguing it though. The I, goal, I don't. I there is I'm not giving certain, them much. There credit, is a certain but. feel that it's more of a quest to me. It's more there's a whole genre that Hollywood talks about. The kids on bikes movies yeah. is kind of the genre, yeah. and most of those have horror elements, but they tend not to be horror. Even Stranger Things is that horror? Is it sci-fi? I'm not sure. It's debatable. It's a mix. Um. I, I actually, I'm more arguing I, I'd that... I'd argue horror, but that'd be me. Me too. I'm, yeah. I'm more arguing that horror has nothing to do with the plot. Yes. That's more of what I'm saying. So I'm okay. coming at it from the reverse angle. So what... Um, yeah, what you're coming defines, at it from a writing aspect. Yeah, yeah. I think most people like, come at it from a visceral aspect. Yeah. 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 And I, I, I don't think horror is, is plot. I, I think the only way really to define horror is to say, are there elements in this that are going to cause... <laughs> that are focused on causing people to to have nightmares you know <laughs> yeah is it is it is its goal is is a certain and it's a balance right because raiders of the lost ark has horror movie moments yeah it has it melting faces and all this other stuff but it's not a horror movie right so where is the difference but what it's Twitter overall tell you? it's overall intent is different you're the overall intent That's of right. the experience of indiana jones is um is action adventure yeah, based but, and, and not to debate this but is the overall intent of this to scare absolutely i okay. think so absolutely. i absolutely would argue this yeah. is this is fear. this is a movie whether about it's fear. effective or not we're not this arguing is a it's movie just about yeah. fear 
and so literally yeah. the plot is about <laughs> fear yeah. even though i know yeah. you're trying to ask it not no, about no, plot yeah, we're but, not arguing with but you. the monster here Damn literally it, feeds you guys are wrong <laughs> <laughs> that's I it like, last episode i really do like when we disagree and it rarely happens i don't think we're disagreeing um, no, we're, no, not. Yeah, we're not we're yeah. not no but i'm more playing devil's advocate so so i, I, I put think it in the art. my my <laughs> definition you know because because you asked this question so like i i more put it out to the crowd because i have a lot of people that I'm connected with who are like horror film people. And I just really wanted to hear what people say. No, I was a, glad I read through. It your, is your a thread. fucking loaded question for many people. For some, it's like no brainer. I love the people like, that responded. They were just like when people die. And I was like, yeah. oh, okay. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like no, it's for some people. It's really simple and cut. And dry. Horror movies are horror movies. Or it yeah, has a lot of violence. And there are horror that, movies that have no violence. Yeah. From oh, a right. writing yeah. standpoint, I think it's about intent. I think it's what is your intention with the work? with with the story what what are you trying to do uh to the audience you know make them feel and if if your goal overall is to scare them to make them feel primal fear by whatever you're throwing at the characters and the audience yeah. and the experience and, then it's a horror and and one thing i like to talk about with movies in general i say every movie is a horror movie yeah because almost every movie there are some happy gilmore aren't. But yeah, I think I think Happy Gilmore is definitely. A horror movie. Um, <laughs> I haven't seen terrifying. it in a while. Uh, but Adam but right. every every movie's goal is to kind of make you tense and then give you release, Tension make release. you tense, give you release. Yeah. Um, and, and you've and talked about this a lot. We talked jokes. about with Solo how with every jokes. action scene was like a the comedy, is the that comedy, pro lot, con, yeah. pro con, pro con good yeah. bad, good bad, and, right? And the horror is just the. the the tension that it gives you is a different kind of tension. It's more yeah. primal. It's more, it's yeah. more intense. Yeah. It's, um, it's trying to make you look away and really unsettle you. Yeah. Whereas the other kind might play it a little safer, but every movie in my opinion is really a horror movie to a when certain extent. It comes extent. down to it. That's and fascinating. That's the problem. I think with this definition is they all share DNA, but yeah. what does it matter to writers? I actually think it doesn't really matter to it's writers. What you make it. It's like what my friend said. It. Can I also it, posit yeah. something too? I think in the, post streaming world i think genre kind of doesn't matter anymore i don't even know why people are arguing it's like it's, it's it, like when the video store the people days who are we, we arguing grew up are with old it. <laughs> yeah i feel like we grew up with genre i video stores were my life yeah. but now it's like my nephew I don't doesn't look at, give a shit i don't look at my menus on my streaming yeah. services like well let me look at the comedy section i don't even do that anymore i guarantee you my 12 year old nephew who loves all sorts of movies if i talk genre with him he'd have zero opinion and when he's 18 he's gonna have zero opinion i i have to imagine the, the people that are arguing this are people that are horror guys yes okay i yes. would imagine and they're like that's but not, that is the core it audience that, that's so. not part of our club <laughs> whereas i i don't know it might be the core audience in some ways but this one has a broader the mass appeal yeah. well, well, let's appeal. talk about that yes. well let's talk about that but i i feel like what jamie said is right like this is whenever you have a horror movie that's immensely popular like quiet place or what have yeah. you there always seems to be the more elite that are like well that's not actually a horror movie you know what i you know what i'm saying the, i think the, though like, this is a great topic so so you pose jamie posed the question blockbuster horror versus indie horror is there a difference so so what do you think i definitely think there's oh, yeah. there's a difference um I don't know what it is you don't know what it is <laughs> no i i i, I, yes, have, thought. I have thought <laughs> but what, what do you think well Broad, so, I think it's broad versus specific. Yeah, yeah, That's and, and it. it's yeah. not. I mean, it's it's pretty simple. But like, I, I, a lot of the movies that become big, fa famous horror movies, they didn't start out broad. They they like picked up, uh, kind of word of mouth and traction, yeah. like a Get Out and a Quiet Place. I don't Paranormal think I, Activity. Yeah, the Blair Witch Project. And, and, Jaws. And, and they're more. Mm, Jaws, I think, is 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 more like. I know. I said it. Feature, I said it. Know? Know? Yeah. yeah. I, I, I I wrote Jaws down what I feel movie. like. So so what? People what I, say that. Let's though. fight. Oh shit! Is Jaws a horror movie? I, oh my god! <laughs> Who are these people? Um, <laughs> you okay? You... Yeah. It just stresses me out so much. To, I don't know why it stresses me out, but like the idea that somebody would sit home, it's elevated horror. I, I hate this, these subject, these post. I'm just saying, maybe genre getting definition. away from the genre argument in general might be better for everybody. Yeah, agreed. agreed. I, I, I think I, the differences between indie film, indie horror, and blockbuster horror or mainstream horror, whatever we want to call it. I think they're the same as the difference between indie films and mainstream films. Yeah. Um, uh, you take a movie like Hereditary, uh, which was a big popular, well, it wasn't a big popular film, but it, you know, it made some waves um, in its own indie space. Yeah. And it, 
doesn't worry about some of the things that mainstream horror worries about. It doesn't worry about connecting the dots. No, it doesn't. It doesn't worry about all the different screenwriting closed systemness of yeah. it. In fact, I think it uses that as a strength. It it actually doesn't pay off everything because yeah. it feels a little more real or things come out of the left field more and it's a different experience. Yeah. Whereas I think it for all its horrorness is a comfortable experience. Definitely. We get laughs there. Oh yeah. We we might cry there. We get that full range of emotions that we get from almost a Pixar film. Yeah. All in a mainstream. It's horror. crafted. As, as you said, Jimmy, it's it feels comfortable in that it reminded me of watching movies when I was a kid. Yep. Nineties. Yep. Right. It felt like a nineties monster. And that, movie. I couldn't agree in more. In the best like, way possible. When I, I saw Hereditary. I saw Hereditary three times. I, I liked it. I know we've all argued about it, but <laughs> that doesn't make me think of. There's no nostalgia when I watch Reddit. You know what I mean? There's no. Yep. There's nothing there because it's not yeah. connecting to anything before it. Whereas yeah. this movie, I was like, this, this it, everything. But, but from it, a writing feels, standpoint, mm-hmm. you, there there are you. That's what you I'm saying. You hit the nail standpoint. on the head. There's two different designs. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. and when you're looking for mass appeal, you want to make it as digestible as possible. Right mm-hmm. and and as it's a four as quadrant possible. horror movie. Yes, and this checks that box. It's digestible. It is. Uh, it everything is tied up in a bow. You know, it's it it it, it feels like your traditional Hollywood movie. Th- this movie took that took clowns, and you know, like I think we haven't had a clown horror movie in a long in a time while. in a long time. And it, the and Night it, Watchman. I think <laughs> the Night Watchman, written co-written by Jamie Nash, right? <laughs> Chris um, and I almost made one. Okay, well, outside of what you guys have done, <laughs> Eli Ross clown, <laughs> right? Right. Uh, this no, this had the promise of that potential when it was announced, and I think it actually delivered on the clown horror that we have had. Much. A, it, like you know, it fed into that. Yeah. Like Jaws feeds into the the fear of yeah, swimming, claustrophobia. Yeah, hit right, those, right. It, it hit claustrophobia really. It well. delivered on the promise of the premise plenty. A real fear that plenty really exists, the and the movie delivered in spades, yeah. just yeah. at the right yeah. moment. Yeah. Right. I mean. Yeah. I, can't argue that. Yeah, we knocked. We we talked way more about genre than I was expecting. Yeah, we haven't talked. Let's cut. talk about structure yeah, a little bit. Because I we I feel like we, yeah we've talked about the theory behind the movie way more. <laughs> well, so I did you want to talk on uh, the different types of horror that are used in this movie? You know, the terror, yeah, dread, well, Stephen King. I, I think with this movie and a little bit the structure too. One thing we noticed we were talking about before we went on air um, was that the <laughs> That it, this is another movie with a prologue kind of structure in some ways. I mean, this one, it's a shorter prologue, but you could almost see a version of this movie where you cut that you cut whole Georgie. scene and you don't see Pennywise in the beginning. So he's more revealed throughout. Yeah, you could start with uh, meeting Bill and Georgie's already missing. Yeah. Do you think that's in the script because it's so iconic? The open the 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 prologue. It's a great scene. Well, it's, it's just a great, a great scene, but sequence. Saying, but that 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 is the uh, iconic part of the book and other the other version too. It, or, yeah. you, it would be know. hard. It would be hard not. I'm Can not. Can you imagine the movie without it? No, no it's too iconic. Yeah, yeah. It's I yeah. I mean, but it's, and this it's the money scene. this uh, version of it mm-hmm. is so good. Yeah. Yeah. No, so, it is. Like yeah, th- yeah. my favorite. I I don't think the movie ever gets. It, it's one. Of, it's got the bl- it's the blade syndrome. Uh, like Blade One, it, 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 the best scene in the movie is the opening scene, and it's never as cool. That I don't think the whatever movie, Blade rules, and, man. I love all the <laughs> yeah, blades except for three. Um, <laughs> I don't think the movie ever gets as good as the opening sequence for me, yeah. even though I love this movie. Yeah, so I can't imagine it with that. I don't. It. I don't agree with that. But yeah, okay. the the new kids on the block jokes. Are, is that what it was? I know. <laughs> that was the best. Part. I mean, my favorite part in the movie is actually the baseball. Please, bat. girl, don't go. When he pulls the baseball bat, and oh, there's that great. moment where oh, he's yeah. like, "I guess we're gonna have to kill this fucking clown." Down. Yeah, that's great. That's my favorite part that's in the movie. Yeah. yeah. I, I so Richie. Sp- yeah. Speaking of that prologue, though, it kind of shows you once you show the clown. You kind of kill. There's not as much mystery in it. Right. You know, we know what the villain is. Nothing's as scary he, as what you imagine. He shows his stuff right away. It's not yeah. Jaws where it's under the water and kind of hidden. No, it's similar. It's yeah. similar to this the opening scene of Jaws. Yeah. But this movie delivers on Pennywise over and over and over, and I think that might be where it feel feels a lipper, little different than the book. And again, I read the book as a ten year old. Gotcha. But the book filled me with dread. And this movie doesn't have as much dread because it keeps showing me stuff. 
Gotcha. And I don't have a problem with that. It's just a different feel. It's I think it would. I think it would have been almost frustrating with the marketing versus what this movie did within the content. You know what I mean? Like, I, I want to see the clown, I, I think. I think to fill this whole story and have that level of dread, you'd have to turn it into a television series. Yeah. I think it would have to be an eight-episode television series where you're given little pieces and, you yeah. know, it's more dramatic. I something. did. I, I like we're disagreeing on something. Mm -hmm. I feel like this movie is fucking loaded with dread. Even though you do see the terror... Mm -hmm. Would you define Pennywise as terror? Yeah. The terror. Yeah, okay. he's the terror. So. But, so, the, but the dread is that he is, he's, he can do anything. You yeah. don't know which way he's he coming from. You know that he's there, but well, not what he's doing. So one thing right. I noticed or that why? I didn't or notice. Why? Well, so one thing I noticed that I didn't notice the first time through upon like rewatching and deconstructing this, he only shows up. I mean, we know it, it, it's it's well known because of the source material, and a lot of this might be credit to Stephen King and not the writer, you mm -hmm. know, the screenwriters. Mm -hmm. But he only shows up when someone is experiencing their specific personal fear. Right. So mm -hmm. each character, when they're experiencing their moments, like like Rich, uh, um, oh, what the hell is his name? Uh, the kid that um, has all is scared of disease. Oh, yeah. When he takes out his pills, Mike. the fu the fucking leper shows up. You know, mm -hmm. it's only when he takes out his pills yeah. and he's yeah, experiencing. Yeah, yeah. So, so I think that it sets that a is very a bit of a source material. And and and, yeah. and I think the movie, well, the movie sets like strict rules for when Pennywise will appear. You right. Know what I mean? Well, and while that is true, there are a lot of Pennywise appearances. So that's, yeah. That's what I'm saying. While there is dread, there's no yeah, doubt yeah, there's yeah, dread yeah. used. It, every time Pennywise shows up, it, it releases the dread. Yeah, you're saying so, the build up the is build up. gone. Yeah, yeah, there's yeah, there's not yeah, as much yeah, build up. Yeah, yeah. Just because there can't be. There's, yeah. them, I'm not suggesting that's a problem. It's just yeah. a different type of. Do you uh, think uh, that's to please mechanism. this modern audience? I honestly just think it was needed to tell the story. Okay. You know, I, I think it's yeah. the type of story. And again, I think that might be a little bit where the is this a horror movie uh, thing comes yes, in. Yeah. Because he's. It's so present that the monster's there. We know what it is. Yeah. It's not as much of a It mystery. like Skip to Freddy Five. Yeah. 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 And, and instead bit. of Nightmare on Elm Street, Freddy very, is rarely seen. It was like if yeah. Freddy was already established yeah. and having fun. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. It Skip to Freddy Five. Which is my preferred Freddy. Mm -hmm. Mine you know too. I, mean? I, yeah, I actually yeah. prefer when he was having yeah. fun. Yeah, and that, that's you know? true. If you want to make Pennywise more of a character, you have to show him and have him having fun with his kills yeah, like, not yeah. that he kills tasty so much. But, tasty but, beautiful fear but it's a good point because like if you watch the first nightmare freddy's not as much of a character no and, you know and and it's not to, he's me, not to me the first one is much creepier scarier yeah yeah you know, nightmare inducing the other ones are huge fun i love them i mean yeah but, but this different. one's was was not about that and they were trying to scare the shit out of you with the clown that's right um that's right. and, and do, do and, you think um a lot of speaking on that do you think a lot of those there's a lot of jump scares in this movie there's which 23 there's 23 <laughs> which i think a lot of the horror fans are might be also objecting to that when it yeah, comes to the yeah. backlash on it but yeah. do, you, do you think those are in the script or is that like an a lot I of think them, they are some of them seem oh, like they're editing to some me of them are they're stings. editing and yeah yeah i like, think they are though i would imagine they are what do you think jamie I, you know I, i've read the script and i can't really remember like a lot of times writers will use tricks like they'll underline them and yeah. stuff like that or they'll put them in bold yeah and they'll <laughs> loud well, sound yeah yeah, yeah. there, there yeah. was a while i remember where i would send a script out a horror script and ghost house pictures or something that have a rule that you had to have a scare every five and i'm not blaming the pacing ghost houses, of the jumps but they, they literally would count them yeah um and when and, and now nowadays i feel it's more feel it's like this doesn't have enough scares it's a whammy it's count yeah it's yeah a whammy you, count. you need this a whammy every yeah so that's a joel silver thing where yeah. a whammo or i think yeah. he had a whammo board or yeah, something yeah. Whammy i board. use the whammy and it, when i'm making a, when i'm making doing horror i just use a red marker for blood you know okay. like I do the if it's if it doesn't have and I write it on the page if it does if I'm flipping through and I'm missing red and, for and two or three Joel, pages. It's Joel Silver's was he used to chart action sequences across scripts and it was called a whammy board or whammo yeah. board or whatever he called yeah. it and it was like this page needs a whammo and it's based <laughs> on press your luck you know yeah no yeah. whammies no whammies is that what it was uh, yeah. Okay, yeah I had no idea <laughs> it's a press your luck <laughs> so reference that was <laughs> <laughs> Savage Steve so, you, so you're saying these can be, you think that these are probably these in are there they're written into the fabric I, okay. I would say these are paste 
horror. I love whammies. that you counted them. That's amazing. Yeah. Well. Yeah. And it's well, I don't know. I didn't know that you would do that. That's it's awesome. It's certainly a thing. I, I had Dude, it. I go overboard with this podcast. I, <laughs> I, I had a chart of different movies and how many jump scares they had. That you yeah. probably saw this chart at some point. It was it was going around the internet. And surprisingly, there weren't that many more jump scares now than there were before and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, what you learn is when you really take the time to study your favorite movies, they all have 20, yeah. 30. Yeah. You know, even the ones where you imagine them as just dread filled, mm -hmm. they still have 20 or 30. It, like, I think Scream. Has it just depends 30. on their if they're earned or not. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Cheap jump scares. Cheap. There are jump oh, scares that are earned. Yeah. So, yeah. A good one, though. Yeah. We all love a good one that gets us. We all love the one where they just throw the cat out of the frame. Oh, fuck. <laughs> right. That's, that's the one we want. Um, I could do without all cat jump scares. <laughs> like, it, yeah. I, find that. the cliche, throw it away. What did uh, um, you've got in here? The Stephen King quote on types of horror. I feel like we. Well, yeah, we, we kind of covered about, it. We did we covered talk? It. Did we yeah, cover that? Yeah, we yeah. covered it. What's we covered it? Another. So the Stephen King quote. Not. I don't. Unfortunately, I didn't you have made you made it into four, and I like your four better. Okay. I don't remember the four, but it was basically Stephen King says something along, "I'll try to horrify you. I'll try to." And he lists like three things, and if that doesn't work, I'll gross you out. Yeah, I'm yeah. not proud. Um, and and really, they're 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 the types of horror we have. We have the the dread. Mm -hmm. We have the suspense, which I think we mm -hmm. may have added. Yeah. The terror, which is which is the Pennywise jumping the, out at you. The, the moment. The attacks. Yeah. yeah. And, the, the, and that's yeah. what I'm saying. This movie has a the lot. The undeniable of, fear that's in your face. Yeah. This movie delivers on that. Oh yeah, um, definitely. Whereas some movies don't. Some movies keep that whole thing off to Act Three, and then Pennywise jumps out in Act yeah. Three or something, or maybe once you'll come out. Um, yeah, this almost had scene out. one deliver. Scene one. Oh and, yeah. And yeah. scene one, scene three, scene five, scene oh, yeah. seven. I mean, it he, just he keeps was coming. Him as a robust. character is delivering on that it's just absolutely. by being on screen almost, yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. 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 And and it, so just one thing I noted, and because because a lot of writers ignore this stuff, they, they they make they do a good job of making death like ever present even when there's moments of levity and stuff like even the moments of levity sometimes are with lines talking about death like uh bill says i'd come with you if i weren't dying you know he's coughing right you know yeah uh georgie says bill's gonna kill me uh bill's gonna kill me and uh you like my georgie yeah. um <laughs> and then richie when he meets ben dude just got stabbed and he says I'm glad I met you before you died. Like they're <laughs> constantly throwing in these 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 things that just plant the seed of death still in your head. And and that's in the writing, mm -hmm. definitely. That's intentional. It's like even though um Pennywise is nowhere near and the scene is not calling for Pennywise to be you to be scared of Pennywise, it plants that seed back in your head that you should be. Yeah. And well, I just thought that was really well handled. What the uh so, like, that really goes down with the interplay of the characters and the fact that this is kind of a team movie, right? Yeah. <laughs> it really is. No, yeah. it does. I with, mean, uh, w w would you agree too many? Yeah. Well, th that's the one thing, you know, it feels like there are so many characters. No, <laughs> you know, I want to talk about the ensemble, the, the group. The, yeah. How they bring no, characters. that's why I brought it up. Yeah. 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 <laughs> but, yeah. <laughs> but it feels like if you were constructing this just by yourself without adapting a book a classic book that everybody wants to see three kids it would be three kids for three kids that's all, stranger you things. that's all you need how yeah. many stranger four. things four i think was the team yeah um right now i think a couple of the kids get marginalized and have nothing to do oh you could, yeah what i would do in that situation if this were my original screenplay i, I would i would combine jamie nash characters. is it jamie nash is it <laughs> it would be I, good i'd combine those characters into four characters you know yeah. you could take two of them and smush them together and that's often in the, and like like you said if you if you were te from a teaching standpoint if your character has nothing to do then they don't belong there right and so how you make that work is you combine them with somebody it's like your favorite things about this character you really want to explore things with how can i keep that character but like give them something to do and you mix them with another it, one exactly that yeah. that's the typical you but combine there's a reverence for the source material here that yes probably exactly keeps them not only yeah. that not yeah. only is there a reverence it's it's a thousand pages in the source material so you have a yeah. lot of room to explore these yeah. characters but also the way it's told in those two you know flashback uh concurrent structure 
Um, spoiler alert, but they may kill off some of those characters yeah. a little quicker than others. So they <laughs> they're narrowed they're down. Uh, Star Trek red shirts. Yeah, they <laughs> narrow the team. And you know that. So these characters are just people from their past, like, you know, yeah. or this one or yeah. whatever. Remember that so, guy who had this issue? Yeah, so it's a different structure. Yeah. It's an entirely different structure. But if I was setting out to do this, and look, Stranger Things, I think there's a reason they have four. Yeah. Three is like a magic number because you can kind of get a balance. Yeah, there's That would be my – That w- I would go with three. And it's yeah. way more manageable yeah. from a writing standpoint too. I mean they mm-hmm. went to exhaustive lengths. If, if to, we look at – If the, it was a comedy, I'd throw in more characters. Look, look at the – But a horror yeah, movie. Well, no. Look at the kids yeah. on bikes movies. Um, we have E.T. That's three three characters. Goonies is a lot. Goon- yeah, Goonies kind of goes against Goonies that. Goonies has the big number. Uh, yeah. Monster that's Squad. Monster Squad, what's that, three? Four. four? Oh, no, that's like, yeah, four or five. Four. Really? Well, there's if you count many? the little girl. The little girl. And then okay. At the end, and there's like the older, moments, the, man. the uh, attractive I counter. virgin. Oh, yeah. Non, the, the yeah. non-virgin <laughs> yeah. girl. Yeah. Um, um, it depends what you count as who Explorers counts. Explorers yeah. is three. Three. Stand By Me is four. Four. Yeah. It's just Stephen it's, King. It's pretty rare when you get these larger numbers. Yeah. I don't feel like this is too large, though. This is, you know, and the movie obviously cares about all the characters. Oh, yeah, they it's the run. Lengths, it's the runtime that might not give a few of them yeah. what they're it, what they're no, doing. Is it does a great job with them. I never really felt like why is this kid in it, but at the same yeah. time, if I was writing this myself, it would be different. Yeah. I just how like, is how how is um the the Jewish kid stand different in the book than he is in the movie. You don't even remember. I don't remember. Dude, I, yeah, I, I don't remember. So so I didn't re- when I was. I'm fat as a person who doesn't know the source material. His mm-hmm. character in particular, I'm very interested to see what they do with him as an adult because he's the one character who doesn't face his fears. In mm-hmm. fact, he succumbs to to them. Yeah. He's and but what's even stranger is and I say stranger because everything all the other characters um it's meti- the work is meticulous with pointing out a specific childhood trauma, right? right? Yeah. With him I was trying to figure out what it is that he's afraid of. And it's basically there's a painting in the synagogue that's yeah. like keeping him from being able to study the Torah. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. And it's just a painting. It's not like something, a childhood I think, trauma. I think if the movie had more time, it would be his actual fear of the synagogue itself. Of and the being, tone. Yeah. It, of like, becoming it, a man. That's it just, what it's. A, he yeah, says. It, he says his first line yeah. in the movie is, I got to read the Torah so I could become a man. That's well, like the first thing. Out of the movie mouth. just doesn't have time to give yeah, it more yeah, uh, yeah. atmosphere to his fear. Yeah. Atmosphere. Yeah. To, <laughs> atmosphere. Yeah. Atmosphere. So, yeah. so the previous draft of the script, the, the immediately previous draft had that scene. Instead of the scene with the painting, yeah. it was like a woman wanting to have sex with him. It was it almost reminded me being of The Shining. Man. Being a man. Being a man. And that was his fear. And so that previous draft, I remember that was a big uh, difference. I think that, that would have worked. Seems like really they made well. a broad decision on that one. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, I think. Yeah. You know, exactly. They Did wanted they to think keep it was all too much like Bev? No, dude, I think they just want to keep all sexuality out of it. Yeah, it's they just made as much as they could. Yeah. yeah, just like they toned down the racism, even though it's there. It, it it's there. No, it's the there scene in the from room. The Shining a little bit. Okay. In the, in the bathtub. Oh, kind of that would have been so like that. good. In, in because that, because so that's what I was looking for. Just because I was, I was basing it on this the material. That, that's not that movie it's though. Basing it on the material. Well, it's about sexual awakening is is a big undertone in this movie. Definitely, I, I think they do everything they can to suppress to, yeah, it. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's That's part of what this movie. I think it's, it's sanitized. sanitized. It's sanitized. Just like the racism. It's if man. Kubrick made this movie, I couldn't even imagine. Yeah. the whole thing would be sex. Yeah. No, know, but so, it is, that's but not everybody what this movie else is. has a clear through line. All the characters in the movie, and this, this, and Stan doesn't. It's like, what is his fears? Is like this weird pan- painting because Andy, the guy, was like, I'll get the person from Mama to be in this. It feels like a decision from Andy. Yeah. To get the that to get that creepy actor they have, they're Doug Jones in mm-hmm. there. Yeah, um, yeah. yeah. Well, let's so, talk about their arcs. Like we, okay. we got yeah, we got yeah. him covered, but yeah, let's talk yeah. about some of their other yeah. arcs. Well, it, it's it's an interesting thing because I think you can track this movie basically by their arcs. Really, really definitely, simply. definitely. It's character driven. It's character driven for sure, and the the team basically has the same arc in some ways. Yeah. It's kind of like almost a team arc mm-hmm. to an extent. Yeah. yeah. Uh, they they start out i mean I, I think the movie's theme if we wanted to hit the yeah theme, let's hit them it, it kind of it kind of comes out right there in that mic scene with the uh with when they're putting the bolt in the head yeah. of the sheep yeah um i can't remember exactly I, what he said I, did you write I it got down it. of course i, I wrote, wrote it down there's no um, way jamie <laughs> come he, on he, he's because yeah. that because it is like the thematics i it does it's not clean 
He should have just looked dead. at the camera and just said yeah, it, right? He says, <laughs> he says, there are two only two places you can be in this world. Out here like us, which is the killers, or in there like them, which is lambs yeah, for the and, slaughter. And really the That's movie the movie, the movie is, in my opinion, thematically, it's about standing up to bullies or standing yeah, up for yourself. Yeah, f- f- um, yeah. Whether the bully is your, your um, abusing father yeah. or... Or you're, you know, if it's a, a clown, Pennywise, yeah. or an actual bully who's yeah. who's chasing you facing around, your fears. It's kind of standing up to <laughs> your them. El Guapo. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's standing yeah. up to them and <laughs> and uh, and fighting for your for yourself. Right. That, that's yeah. kind of what it's it's, it's as simple as that. And, and um, on, and on top of that, I'd say that they find that through being together yeah they find the courage to do that yeah through... a lot of the lines hint that you could argue what did i this is later because yeah we're going to touch on what the lesson is but uh there's 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 like a lot of intention in the writing to to state that um teamwork and mm-hmm. friendship is right. is just as important as facing your fears like they say the only reason that we survived is because we fought them together yeah. You know, and then the the very last line of the movie, which would lead you to, to think that this is what they wanted you to leave the movie with is she says, I never felt like I was a loser when I was with you guys. Right. That's the right. last line of the movie. So so uni- like, the movie's about unity. Yeah. Yeah. Completely. Exactly. Yeah. Um, but uh, f- as far as crafting, we d- what we one thing we didn't talk about crafting the team and choosing your characters from a writing standpoint, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. so you got this theme, right? Yeah. Yeah, so uh, you know there are a lot of ways to come up with your team, especially if if you're just starting to to write your script and you're figuring out who the characters are. Maybe you have a plot, um, but one of the ways some people do it, and I, I've done it once or twice myself, is by kind of fitting each of the characters into archetypes yeah. to see like what roles they fit mm-hmm. in, in your story. And if you looked at like the hero's journey, they'd have these crazy names like. Um, the trickster or the herald yeah the fool like, you know what does that mean right. exactly yeah. or stuff um so what i one book i like to reference for this and it's kind of a very um save the cat written type book and it's probably my favorite post save the cat book but it's called my story can beat up your story by jeffrey allen Schechter, I guess. The Schechter. Yeah. Names again. Names. This, this episode is <laughs> Boy, mess what I wouldn't names. get for a Jeffrey Allen Jones. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> right. Um, so, so he has a whole chapter on on various characters, and it's really archetypical characters. So I'll read you the types of characters he has, and we can we can talk a little bit about. Let me define them super quick. So he, um, if you want to look at that, oh, yeah. uh, if he. I'm, I'm trying to find my definition. I'm familiar the with the book, so I was glad that you brought it up. I actually, um, I really like that book. Yeah, it's a good one. And uh, it's very practical, much like Save the Cat. So his heroes, first of all, he has a hero and a villain. And I think in this case, Bill, uh, Bill's the hero. The hero, yeah. Pennywise is the villain. Maybe also the bully. Uh, what's the bully? Henry. Name? Henry. Um, I think you could put him in bully category. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. There's Just a bit. <laughs> He's the fear of many of the characters. I'm, I'm, I should look the, the actual definitions up because I didn't have them written. But the, there's a protector character, and the protector is the character who is the keeper of the hero's moral compass. Who would you uh, think? I, I can tell you why. Yeah. Um, oh, man. Well, I, you, I agree with you. I saw, I saw that you said Bev. Bev I, yeah. I, I, I agree. I, so, so yeah, Bev I think, would be my I think answer, Bev so. really never challenges. She just... She is almost the muse and the leader and some the yeah. the inspiration. She's the strongest. She's the spirit. She's the strongest of the kids. And there, there's without a, scene. a doubt. Easily, and her personal story is yeah, yeah. The, yeah. The, maybe the worst. I, oh, easily, well, in this, definitely in the this worst. movie, it is it's the worst, worst yeah, of yeah. all of them. So, yeah. and and by the way, I should say he, they have six characters here. So, and I'll I'll just read them super quick. The protector, the deflector, the believer, the doubter, the thinker, and the feeler. And then on top of that, you have the hero and the villain. Yeah. Richie's and the doubter. These are very archetypal characters right? when you say no. it like that. Yeah. Richie, Richie's definitely – the one thing I'd say in this story is some of these characters, when you get to the doubter, the thinker, and the feeler – um, some of them mix and match. Yeah, Richie's well, both the doubter and, and the feeler. Richie also doesn't get visited by Pennywise. Yes, he does later. Later on, I, br- I broke it down. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I, I mean, it. I mean, in like in the early part of the story, he no, did, he's part of the team before he's visited. Yeah, so, you know, what I mean? yeah, yeah, that's what I'm just trying to say. So, the, yeah, <laughs> and, and just to skip, the feeler is the character who, who, though an ally of the hero, 
intuitively i'm reading for the book intuitively <laughs> shoots first and they ask questions later and it's usually like han solo mm -hmm. or something like that so richie um, is like that. and i think richie's a little like that at times yeah um he's not thinking about the shit that he's saying it, exactly not at all. however well, he's not he's thinking not, at all he, he also i feel like he doesn't get visited early on because he's not a character of depth like his actual character yeah you know what i mean like the he's story not, doesn't he's have not a place thinking on levels where he's that afraid of anything because yeah. he's never there and mentally yeah, yeah. you know yeah yeah and the the thinker the thinker character is usually somebody that overthinks it you know they're yeah. they're kind of like well i'm not sure maybe and i think the mike character it's the is one that with his the, name is that his name eddie, eddie. eddie. i'm sorry why yeah. am i calling him eddie mike? is the mike's one. mike's uh the african-american yeah. Yeah, yeah 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 uh so so Eddie is the one. I think Eddie is the one that's always he's thinking the thinker. Through. Like, Definitely, maybe we shouldn't do this. Maybe, yeah, yeah, you know, he's he's yeah. kind of that. Kind Although of, his all of fear his, al his all fear of almost his, defines his, that. Yeah, yeah, well, I mean, yeah. and all of the, the moments where he's like, maybe we shouldn't do that, is about his own fear of getting sick. Right, like that. Right. It yeah. has nothing to do with like Pennywise. It's like there's gray water. I'm gonna get listeria. Right. Um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, you're right. And then I think the doubter. I think they all kind of mix in. Like a lot of them yeah. have doubters. Yeah. Uh, uh, trademarks. I put Stan here, but I think. I think Eddie um, doubts at times, yeah. and they all kind of doubt, and they all lost. Who, who did you say Mike was again? Which uh, uh, archetype? Mike. I don't think Mike fits in. I don't do think you? Mike fits in. I think this, Mike's left this is out. where the six kind of come into play. We never really get a taste of him. Even though Mike is, is. Very, Mike's Mike's story is very clear cut. Well, uh, he has the least. Well, amount he has of beats, number one. He has the theme is stated right to him. To him, and I think that that was intentional because they were like, we gotta there, find something. Uh, his the only his fear of, story is also very well defined. The, yeah, definitely. The only yeah. moment of his psychology I really. feel feel is when he says you know i am an outsider or something he has that kind of thing but i'm not even sure if i had a criticism that. of that of this movie it would be the, his, how his story like, is handled yeah, yeah because i think i think they actually shouldn't have cut out like the the racism inherent in the right. source material and no, stuff because no, no, no. it it plays there and it's like just just say it just say it don't it's it's yeah. so obvious like i yeah just put it in this, just write just, that yeah. it's obvious i Come mean on. that's his fear is racist right yeah, yeah. like and then, but the but the story glosses over he's got an issue and it, he's got to overcome the guilt of believing he's responsible for his parents but it's so glossed over there's like two lines and and two visual moments right. about it like yeah and it, it could be it could have been a better arc because him choosing not to be slaughtered mm -hmm. yeah him choosing not to be the ones that are slaughtered is, yeah. is like big you know yeah he's the one that brings the weapon yeah you know Definitely. i think, I think yeah. his yeah. his is very clear cut though it, it's 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 one of the easiest to track in the movie but that's because he is so thin yeah you know it starts out with henry beating him and then uh him not fighting back and then the second time it's even worse like well it starts out with him hiding from henry and them and then they chase him down with the car and just flick the cigarette at him and then it escalates and until it the, the story is like begging him to fight back you right. know like more so than any of the other characters like he's literally the one character who gets beat up like three times in the movie also the story gives him a clear-cut way to just leave the story yeah he could easily just go yep and not be a part of this but that, he decides to keep going that's why i i put him down in this the there's two we haven't talked about the believer the character believes and trusts in the hero just as the hero is but i put two believers i put ben and oh Mike, ben is because ben yeah. really oh, is that believer yes he right. just believes in the hero he never really has a yeah. doubt in fact he's giving him information to feed yeah. his belief ben's um, character is interesting because i don't think the movie gives him of all the characters a clear-cut fear like henry he fears henry right yeah. but like those moments are like few and far between and it's more about him it doesn't even feel like his fear he just runs across right him. well he gets you know, stabbed the... it's like who's not gonna be scared of some dude who just but, stabbed you right right <laughs> like like when it comes to the rock scene like he's ready to fight you know yeah, I mean, they yeah, all yeah. are they're kind of inspired when they start yeah. throwing this rock yeah, he's even he's, with i think even his... with the fact that he's like he's into bev he's almost fearless yeah. in a way like yeah but once he decides something he does it yeah yeah he's like, not I, but i think his story is about like a, like fulfilling a need which is like companionship yeah. and they they like they they go overboard with that like mm -hmm. he's the new kid on the block who likes new kids on the block and then he's got a blank yearbook he comes to a town like, and figures everything else yeah about yeah it. because he has alone. nobody in there he's yeah, sitting he in the nobody. library and she's like where are your friends like like a, a boy should be playing with his friends in the summer you don't have any friends and he goes can right. I have the book now? Right. Yeah. And, th and then the last character is the deflector, the character who tries to pull the hero off the path with a different moral compass. Now, it could be Richie a little bit. In, in yeah. my opinion, though, this is the parents. Ah. That's what I think it is. Yeah, yeah. So I don't yeah. think it's any of the kids. Who are being manipulated, though. 
It, who it, are we? Don't, they don't really have we characters because they're almost manipulated but, the entire time. But the mother, time. you know, is trying to keep her kids safe. Um, uh, Bill's father is trying to say, forget about that. All the, you know, all, all the parents. All the parents are bullies. So I think it's... I think Except it's Mike's. Bill Fletcher. I, I think I don't think but yeah, Mike's yeah. father's definitely not a bully and he's right about well, his everything. His parents are dead. So that's Oh, I'm the sorry. Farmer. His his his, uh, his, his car- guardian. His guardian. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so so anyway, they they're my takes. But these things are just um, you know, not every script has these. Not anybody uses these necessarily. Yeah. But they're they can be a tool to help you uh, check I bet out most people don't even like consider that stuff when Yeah. It's a great tool. It's I, a, it's a, yeah. I think it's especially great when you have a lot of characters mm-hmm. cuz what can happen is if you're not considering these jobs, and that's how he describes them. These are just jobs. Or yeah. Character you can have, then characters just start saying the same thing or oh, they're yeah. on the same side of the argument. Yeah. This is just a way to psychologically put yourself in their shoes and try to figure out what they might say in a scene. And it, it really comes into play at like a scene when they are walking into the, what's the house called? The Nebo The well house. house. Uh, yeah. And they're all kind of having a debate about it and they can each express you don't want them all to go let's do this shit yeah yeah, no you need contrast and conflict if i I could make jimmy smile for a second i think if you didn't follow these archetypes at all you Mm -hmm. get yourself a rogue one yeah (laughs) yeah you do you get yourself a rogue one where they're all just kind of like blandly on the same page page. and it's like no arguments no conflicts yeah yeah absolutely yeah i always try to i mean i think this this movie does a great job it knows what okay like from a construction size and and this is like Stephen King but also the writers of this version mm-hmm. they've got the theme which is facing your fears and they're like okay each of these characters how can we explore that theme and the, and and it's all their mini stories are built around that theme and and the decisions behind the moments you're going to put these characters are in are all still based around that theme but it comes from the construction of deciding okay Bev's going to do this uh, it's all based on like picking out that theme, you know. It's, it's so. picking out that theme and then giving your character positioning your characters around that theme. Yeah, that that's really the key to it. Yeah, yeah. Who's gonna be on the strong side? Who's gonna be on the weak side? Right. How are you gonna flip the the script on them? Yeah, yeah. And in some ways, I've heard it described as your thesis. You know, yeah. that's the, your theme is your thesis, and this is almost like different positions of debate. Different around debates. Your th- yep. Thesis. So when you yeah. come up with your with your theme. Think of all the positions of debate and then try to find characters. Who can would, be that voice. That would embody yeah, those voices. Yeah. And that, that's how you get conflict. That's how you get depth. Yeah. It's, all, it's all those things. Yeah. yeah. And this movie does a great job. All the, It's all very clear, except for, in my opinion, Stan is, like I said, I'm very confused about what his viewpoint is. It's just it doesn't scary. really des- yeah I don't no, think it, it doesn't I, hurt it doesn't I'm, hurt the movie but I, no, I agree with you it. I'm but just saying I'm fascinated yeah. by the fact that everybody else is so uh, clear yeah not yeah. I feel like a runtime like additional ten minutes yeah, would have yeah, fixed yeah. it that's it, all it's yeah. probably one line of dialogue oh away. it's two or yeah. three um, tweaks but, away or it's also again if it was our own script it's probably just cut him give his cut him out to somebody yeah else, he doesn't he doesn't need to be there what what's the name of the kid who is hypochondriac what's, eddie eddie i feel like those that that's who i would smush together because eddie's yeah the way eddie plays out it seems, seems very similar to yeah the, overbearing yeah. mother who wants you to read right. the torah you're right you just add that in yeah, yeah. definitely yeah. yeah so we just fixed stephen king's problem <laughs> If only he's got 1100 like you said he's got 1100 pages <laughs> these these have two they have two hours um yeah i don't feel like the source material was written as a movie no, in any way never. I, from what i remember yeah that's that is not <laughs> that is a different type of writing altogether yeah um and we talked about what let's, what's the lesson let's yeah of uh, well, I mean, we we touched on it. We touched on you it. You printed out all these papers, the, Jimmy. Yeah, you got yeah. the lesson come on, on there, come don't on, you? Come on, come on. <laughs> um, no. So we've talked about the moral premise. I thought it was a good way to bring up the moral premise for anybody who hasn't listened to all of all these. Of us, yeah. We talked about the moral premise in our early episodes, but we haven't touched on it again. The book and the book. Yeah. What's the moral premise, Jamie? Who's who? Uh, Stanley Williams. There you go. I couldn't. It's remember a good book. It. I've it's read it since book. we started doing this blog. podcast. So yeah, I bought it and read it. Yeah, it's, it's a good. good. Book, no, right? it's good. It's yeah. really good. And and I'm on the same page with Jamie in that you can bring out ideas, tools. Yeah. Oh, he's oh, got Jamie's it. Got Jamie's it in his got hand. it. Yeah. See, Jamie likes it, with it so you. much. Stan, he's got it with Stanley him. Stanley D. Williams. Yeah. So, um, well, I always have it readily available too to help my clients because it's really it's a really good reference to kind of help people um, hone in on what they're trying to say, um, which this movie 
um, also does a great job of like maybe they came up with stuff and then the theme came afterwards. You know, sure. even though we said all the characters are based around the theme, you know, it could. I feel like it comes afterwards in this one. Yeah, yeah. It's I already agree. it's That's already the book. The DNA is already, yeah, there. already there. They just got to build it. But um, yeah. but so the moral premise is essentially uh, vice, a specific moral vice leads to the main characters or the set of characters failure but a virtue like the main controlling virtue leads to the character's success so in this movie i thought it was I, it could be one of two things like we talked about um fear and self-doubt leads to vulnerability and death which is like essentially the whole movie is about that but courage leads to empowerment and survival which is the success of the movie? They're empowered. You could just say survive. one or the other. Yeah, too, yeah. They both, but just, both of those yeah. things are inherent to yeah. their, to this to this success at the end of the movie. Everybody is empowered and they're alive. You know, like that's what you look for. Like, what did the characters get by the end of the movie? And that's their success. Um, or the only thing you have to fear, is fear, fear itself. itself. <laughs> or I said, yeah. oh. <laughs> like I said, the movie says we were all together when we heard it. That's why we're still alive. The movie makes lots of effort to say like friendship is what made us survive you know not just facing fears so i would say isolation leads to vulnerability mm-hmm. that but cooperation right. and teamwork leads to empowerment survival mm-hmm. a, ver- are... a very common theme in a lot of movies yeah and a lot of kid movies a lot of kid movies <laughs> wasn't trying to reinvent yeah, yeah. the wheel on that yeah no no and it doesn't they have, have to, have to. Uh, yeah. th- themes are usually uh truths everybody agrees with and, yeah and, yeah you know they're not trying to be divisive in the audience i think this one's pretty easy to read and i liked that you know it's very a little on the nose some people would say but it worked yeah you know yeah i i think so my lesson learned just big picture is every movie's a horror movie uh you can (laughs) you can learn a lot from horror movies um every movie's a horror movie and really any movie can be a horror movie if you give it the right coat of paint um, because it's not necessarily plot yeah. driven. It's not, you know, it's just if you can deliver the thrills and the scares. Almost any movie could be a horror movie if you give it the right kind of dark paint. So I like that. Paint darkly. My, what's your butt lesson learned from this episode? From this episode? No. Well, I I don't even know if it came from the doing this episode, but my lesson learned from the movie is just, uh, not an adaptation that isn't a slave to the source can be great. Yeah. I, I that when I walked out of this movie, that's kind of how I felt. I was like, they did it because I doubted it the whole time. I just expected a mess. Yeah, I, that's how I felt about Twilight. It was just, <laughs> no. Yeah. Um, he's I, wearing I, a Twilight shirt. If you didn't know, right now, I think he's team. He's exactly. team Ed, we're, we're Ed, I, whatever. It is. I think my other my other lesson learned is if you have a name I can't pronounce, <laughs> your chances of success are going way up. Change your name. Yep. Yeah, Nash is too easy. Nash is too easy. Well, we have anything else to say on yeah, Stephen say. King's yeah. It, yeah. Andy Muschietti's, and Carrie Fukunaga, Nuga, Terry Fukunaga? I'm not going to help you. <laughs> Dude, I, I'm, I apologize. They're never going to hear this, but I feel Jamie's bad. Jamie's old manager. My own, and, um, sort of. Who has a, a pronounceable name. Pronounceable name. Though, I some people might get s- stuck on it. Gary Doberman. Look for him. Yeah. Uh, he's... He's the hottest the thing in horror right now. Yeah. Horror screenwriting. Is he? Awesome. What is he doing now? Is he? He is doing. Um, he said the nun. The nun. James but Warren. he's also doing. Um, what's the kids' show? It's something after dark. Um, things to fear. He's oh, doing that one. Who? Uh, are you afraid of the dark? Are you afraid of the That's dark the adaptation? Yeah. He's writing that. He's writing that. That's awesome. That sounds like he's living the dream, man. He's got all the jobs I want to have. <laughs> <laughs> So you secretly hate him, right? I secretly hate him, but no, he's he's too good of a guy. I really do. He's a he's a good guy. So the good lesson we all learned is that sometimes the good guys win. Absolutely. Yeah. That's what we learned. Yeah, if you keep working. Yeah. Yeah. We don't. Don't, don't give up the faith. Yeah. All right, guys. All right, thanks for listening. Stephen King said, all right. Thanks. Bye. You have just listened to Writer's Blockbuster, a screenwriting podcast featuring two professionals and another guy. Available only on Thundergrunt.